if you feel like your life force energy has been stripped from you in ways and you're wondering how to get it back, how to inspire creativity again, how to create a career, a life path that is aligned with your soul and that is easily accessible to your creative um, energy to be able to make something from an aligned place. So this one's for you. So I was just diving deep into this topic in my meditation, in my book that I'm reading, still transurfing, almost there. It's a dense book. The lessons in there, like you really got to grasp it. And so that's one that I've been taking my time with over the past like month and a half. And so the concept of inspiration and creativity, and I, I have a lot of stuff that came up for me when I was reading this, a lot of stuff about the job that I was just in for almost five years, where I was a creative director, producer, social media, all the things, <laughs> customer service. I was the only employee at the company, and yet I was so underpaid, <laughs> but I accepted that. I accepted that because that's where my worth was, my self-worth was. And so that everything is, we're, no, we're never a victim, right? We are in control of our reality. The, the certain life contracts that we have maybe earlier on in life or some of the really intense things, they are designed to help us remember in the ways that we're meant to remember. Like I would say that I really, um, front loaded my life. I don't know what the rest of it's going to look like, but with intense things to learn and remember and to go through many dark nights of the soul and to hopefully the wind's not too loud today. <laughs> um, and so my mom, on the other hand, like she had a lot of stuff earlier on too. Her dad died when she was seven, a lot of things, but she also just was in a hit and run accident. And so she broke her back and her is it sacrum? Yeah, so she's going through that as well, but it's all designed for us, right? And so then on smaller levels, like things that we can really control. So that seems like it was like a soul contract for her because a lot of people, spiritual people are validating for her, like this is, this is happening. Oh, let's talk about that. This is happening because it's this incubation period. She's getting upgraded to the new energy to be compatible with this new 5D and to whatever, like all the things that are coming to earth, all the upgrades. And so many, if you're feeling this too, so many of us are going through this time right now where like maybe it's a little isolating. Maybe it's like, maybe you don't have a broken back, but like maybe you're in a foreign country <laughs> and you don't speak the language and you're like, wow, I was called to this place, to this time but it's, it's a little different. It's a little quiet. Like I'm moving through a lot of unseen things that feel very heavy, but it's very important this time. Another one of my mom's friends, like she's going through maybe a divorce or breakup or something. And she's like, I just feel like I'm in this like void right now, but she's also receiving these upgrades and these downloads. And so this time is very, very important. So just move through it. If you're going through it, move through it. It's not permanent and you will get through it and you will be ready to go out into the world in a much different version of you, upgraded version of you so that you're more compatible with the earth. The earth is going through so many shifts right now. We're moving into this new energy here on earth. Not only are we going into the Aquarian age, but we're also going into this new 5D energy, this, this wonderful time on earth, the new earth. And so when I was in this job that underpaid me, that I allowed to underpay me, that I attracted so that I could learn where my self-worth was at. Another thing is when we're dating, when we're making new friends, when we're meeting people just in general in life, they are a reflection of you, of where you are at. They're showing you exactly where you are. That's why my first dating, my chronic first date period that I was on last year when I was still in California, I was going on a lot of first dates. So were my roommates. It was, it was fun uh, to have that experience. But I could see who I was attracting. And it's not always like black and white. Like it's not like, oh, this is exactly where my energy is. But like, what are they bringing up? in you. So that's how you can see where you're at in your evolution is who's in your life. Who are you attracting? 
What circumstances, situations are you attracting? And that's where you are. And that's what you get to work with. So I was in this job. <laughs> Does anything else want to come through? I was in this job and I would, my job was to be creative, at least like when I received this promotion after I had a little bit of self-worth come through, I did a mushroom ceremony or no, I started microdosing and then I had these aha moments. I was like, wow, it doesn't even like, it doesn't hurt anybody if I just ask for what I want. <laughs> Like you're never going to get what you want most of the time if you don't ask for it. The worst that they could say is no. And so to my surprise, when I was like, oh, aha, like I was microdosing and I was doing hot yoga. And if you don't microdose, it's not like you're tripping. It's just kind of like the, the wires in your brain are ignited and new creative thoughts come through. And so I was doing it to also receive more creative inspiration. But I doubled my income by that conversation that I was then willing to have. I was like, you know what? I'm worth it. I'm worth way more than this. And so then I, I got that that raise and that promotion and all that. So then I was in this creative field rather than just customer service and social media management. But so often I would just look at my computer and I would be like, how am I supposed to create something today? Like how I would write scripts and concepts for a, for videos that we would make for ads and uh, different things like that. And I was like, I just like, I would be like, come on, like, let's think of something. And it would just be nothing. But then if I look at like the whole picture, the person I was working with or for, there was a few people in the company, the person who owns the company, so wonderful, so smart, so great, so inspirational. Uh, so there's a certain person that was like, they were the type of person, which is very familiar, and I feel like I just attract this person in many different forms, and many different humans, many different situations, and they always need somebody to blame uh, for their problems. And so one moment, maybe you're their golden star, and then the next, you are the source of everything that is wrong in their life. And so I was feeling that from this dynamic, and so I was like, wow, I'm dedicating my life, 40 hours a week, almost five years in this company, and I am just being disrespected in so many ways. <laughs> and now I'm supposed to produce creativity, and creativity is so sacred. It's a sacred thing. We all have creative energy. The essence of who we are is this creative energy. Everything here is creation, divine creation. And so when you can tap into your creativity, you're tapping into the divine. But if you're living in the unconscious, if you're putting yourself in situations or staying in situations, staying with people who just bring out the unconscious in you, who are completely, completely thriving in their own, not thriving, but um, existing in their own uh, unconsciousness, but not like not taking the conscious moment to realize how, you know, they're responsible for something in a situation. And so I was, it was turned off. <laughs> the creativity was turned off. You know, sometimes I would be able to like go out in nature, do a gratitude practice, and then I would have some stuff come through. But in an environment like that, you're not going to find the inspiration and the creativity that you are capable of. The potential in that was just that. It was, I was at a halt. Like it wasn't, there was no more. And so when I left, it was, everything that I needed. As soon as I closed that door, I had been applying for jobs for five years. <laughs> Somehow was not getting anything. Maybe it was a self-worth thing. I don't know. As soon as I closed that, people, so many people and opportunities started finding me. It's all energy. And so I was like, okay, no, I choose to honor the sacred path within myself to find my own creativity and to never waste it in a situation that is not my soul's purpose and my soul's path. And so I took a huge risk by turning down a lot of these opportunities and some of them really did understand. Some of them are on their own path, uh, aligned path. Oh my goodness. That dog is not on a leash. Okay, we gotta move. 
Okay, so we moved a little bit. Um, I have Arlo here with me, that's why I left. Uh, it seems like, and I've talked to a few people about this, in Europe it's not as, I'm here in Portugal by the way, if you don't know, uh, I'm doing van life now, just doing my thing, following my soul's path, even when it doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, it seems like a lot of dogs are, it's not encouraged for them to be neutered or spayed. And so I was wondering why when I first got here four months ago to Italy, everyone was asking if Arlo was a male. And I was like, why does everyone ask that here? And like everyone who is a bee um, seems to have a problem with male dogs. And so I think it's because they're not neutered. So there's a lot of aggression, it seems, in dogs that are male. So when I saw that dog, coming towards us and barking I was like and not on a leash and no fence and no owner I was like that's not something I want to be involved in right now <laughs> um so anyway saying no when it's like whatever like it's the same thing that we were talking about earlier you will attract situations that are aligned with your current energy and so because I was like still in that energy of that job that I had I could tell that I was attracting jobs that really mimicked like what that job would be again in another form. I even attracted a, a yacht opportunity that took me to the exact port and dock in Mexico. I said yes, I probably failed the test, but I learned a lot uh, it, that I was before this job, I was working on a yacht. So I, it's like patterns just repeat themselves until we learn. And so then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to start saying no to things. And when you say no to things and you don't know what's next, you're trusting the unknown. That's an abundance mindset. And so when you are in a place of trusting your path, and you're getting quiet, you're meditating, you're finding mindfulness, you're getting in nature, you're surrounded by joy, by people who love you, respect you. When you're in that flow and you're not being like disrespected or operating within the unconscious or having, you know, other unconscious people bring out the unconscious in you, then you can tap into your inspiration and your creativity in a way that is impossible to do in a, a toxic environment or relationship. Like, in my relationship when it was getting really bad and there was a lot of arguing and everything, I was like, I can't function. Like, not only is my job not allowing me <laughs> or the environment where I can really tap into my creativity, but with this going on as well, I was like, how am I supposed to do anything? I was just like, wow, my life force is gone. And so it's really important to put yourself in an environment where your life force can flow through you. Maybe you're not ready to leave your job yet, but if you can make the time or whatever it is, the relationship, whatever it is, if you can make the time to center and to find your soul, which is like through mindfulness, when you're mindful of your breathing, of everything around you, that awareness, don't knock it over, boobs. Um, that awareness is you. And the more that you can get in there, the more that you change the momentum of your life, you change what you're attracting to you. That's why people say meditation changed their life. It's like they started doing meditation or yoga. Like yoga, I love yoga, but I've been doing it for 10 years, so I don't even get the same benefits sometimes, like especially if I do the same kind of class with the same teacher all the time, because I can zone out. It's about being mindful. When you're, when the more time that you're mindful, the more you're going to attract things to you that are aligned with your soul. The more you're aligned with your soul, the more life force energy you're going to have. The more you're in your joy and following that joy and that curiosity and that inspiration, the more you're going to have creativity available to you. The more inspiration you're going to have within you, obviously. So, I love this message. I hope that it resonated. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you are new here and leave a comment if you feel called to do so. I will see you in tomorrow's video. We've been doing daily videos. Oh yeah, that's what I was going to add. We've been doing daily videos on here for two months now. And the thing about it is that I'm never like, oh, I have to go make a video today. It's something that I committed to doing because my dad and I are still having a competition. He's failing because he hasn't posted once, but the competition was to see who would grow their channel the most by my birthday, March 22nd. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to post every single day 
and just see where that takes me. And it's changed over time and I found more and more inspiration. At first it was just like, hey, like <laughs> solo traveling in Switzerland. I think it was in Switzerland when I started and this is what I did today. And then I was like, you know what? I'm reading this book. I have this inspiration, this topic I wanna to talk about, this thing that really helped me. And so it's just been like every day, I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't wait to talk about this or I'll be reading something or something will be downloaded. And I'm like, wow, I can't wait to, to dive deep into that with people here on YouTube. And so the more you follow and just allow yourself to explore your curiosity, the more inspiration and creativity you will have and the easier it gets some people have been like wow you've been putting in so much work on here it's like it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> it doesn't feel like it at all it's just it's pretty easy like how many hours do people spend scrolling and like doing unconscious things if you just dedicate however long you know these are like 15 minutes sometimes 20 25 if you dedicate 15 25 minutes a day to something that is really like an inner calling like see where that can take you it's really not that hard and then you build that momentum and then you can see where else that takes you like maybe this changes maybe all of a sudden I'm like oh no actually it's the next thing is this but it doesn't matter you just go into it without expectation without attachment to how it's going to be how like it's going to turn out and that's how you get in alignment with your soul just follow that and the creativity and the inspiration will come you can't make it come you just can create the environment the space the alignment for it to flow through you amen all right Arla, you want to say bye we'll come up here oh. there's arlo so uh we are getting ready to leave here this wonderful wonderful campsite here in valgarve in portugal it's like the south part of portugal so I'm gonna go meet a friend that I've made on Facebook. She seems wonderful and very into health and spirituality. So we're going to do an inner child workshop tonight, which will be great. Right up my alley, right what I've been like wanting to manifest and uh, experience here in Europe. And then we're gonna do some van lifing together this week. So she'll show me some of her favorite spots around this area. <sighs> also, uh, whatever that is chainsaw type thing sorry <laughs> um and then I'll head up to France and so up in France my mom will be there we'll, we will meet there in the countryside back to where I was I made some videos while I was there I was only there for a few days and then I was like oh, I got it inspiration hit <laughs> I was like I gotta go get a van so I did all the research and I found the perfect one it was pretty far away so I did like a 10 hour train drive uh, ride to Barcelona to get this rental car deal that my brother found and without knowing that the van would be available after I booked the rental car then it was available so I drove six hours to go see the car then I had to wait a few days for the wire to go through so I went back to Barcelona and then I got on a train which took like 10 or 12 hours and I went and picked up the van drove it to Barcelona and then I drove it to Valencia to stay with family friend stayed a night my first night ever in the van in Madrid and then I came here to Portugal. I met my brother in Lisbon for five days. We had an Airbnb there. And then ever since then, I've been doing van life full time, which has been wonderful. And it just comes to show that if you've had a calling for a long time and it doesn't go away, you should explore it. It's probably for you. So many of my friends have joked like, you're such a balls to the wall kind of person. Like you're a both beat in kind of person. Like, why don't you just like try things small before you jump in? But I'm like, it doesn't fail me. Like I'm never regretting trying something fully that I feel called to do because number one, I trust myself. And number two, if it's not for me, then I learn really quickly. <laughs> and I don't waste much, much time. Um, so anyway, that's that's a little bit of that. So I'm gonna head out of here, do some van stuff, do all the water things, gray water, filtered water, all that. And I will see you in tomorrow's video. Bye.